Greetings world. I welcome you today to consider a powerful personal issue, your self-entrapment. I'd like to offer some strategies of rescue, of release, of redemption, of free, full forgiveness, effective immediately. I will be right back. Perhaps this is the type of freedom you've been seeking. Then join Professor and Dr. Ramesh Richard on this special global telecast, Self Entrapment. And for an opportunity to win a Samsung Q1 Ultra Computer, go to RameshRichard.com. You may also qualify for a copy of Musings and Moorings, a personal spiritual journal, or an iPod Nano. All this at RameshRichard.com. Right now, a look at Self Entrapment with Dr. Ramesh Richard. As I prepared for the Spiritual State of Humanity address, a major news item was playing on global media. Six coal miners had become entrapped 2,000 feet below the earth. Rescuers had drilled holes for both ventilation and nourishment and let cameras and microphones in to, to see and hear anything that could happen there. Unfortunately, there was very little response. Three rescuers were killed in attempting to rescue the six entrapped. And now they've called off. The rescue operations has gone from being a rescue effort to becoming a recovery effort. When you heard the word trap, what came to your mind? The word trap is used, for example, of a mouse trap, or it's used in uh, medicine of a trapped nerve or lung. It is used in golf of a miscalculation where you land in a trap. It is used in law of entrapment where somebody ensnares you when you're unwilling and you can possibly use it as your defense when you are defending yourself. Uh, it is used in physics of a, a self-trapped white optical beam. Usually the word trap is used of negative situations, of tr being trapped in a bad job, you know, when you walk away from the job you feel released, or when you're trapped in a bad marriage. You may have heard of the man who said, uh, I can't seem to please my wife, she wants the perfect husband, I don't know any perfect man except my wife's first husband. Self-entrapment. I want to raise it to your spiritual uh, examination, because each one of us is self-entrapped. How do I know? Let me give you some anecdotal evidence. If you have a conscience that's constantly knowing you and annoying you, you are uh, in self-entrapment. Man wrote a note to the tax service in, of his government and said, I, I owe you this much in taxes. Here's half the amount. If my conscience continues to bother me, I'll send you the rest next month. If you attempt to rationalize your behavior, <laughs> that is, uh, guess what? Evidence of your self-entrapment. There was a kid who used to pray that God will give him a bike. And when he found out that God didn't operate that way, he went and stole a bike and asked for forgiveness. He was following what is called Stewart's Law of Retroaction. Forgiveness is better than permission in many countries of the world, I know. People and police use it, but until they come to a law court which is just, you cannot use it. What I would like you to do right now is to do a search of your memory, the memory of your life, to sort of Google your heart. I want you to write the word Ram Ramesh equals guilty in my case, or your name equals guilty because I don't want you to be probing in mine. Mine is all protected password strong, alphanumeric protected, but it's really for you. You do that and look at the numbers which come up. A dozen pages, thousands of results, hundreds of thousands of results of guilty actions, guilty attitudes, guilty behaviors. You look at your uh, pages, some of them are very relevant and recent. Uh, you've become self-entrapped. You need rescue. Would you like a fresh start in life? Would you like a new beginning? Would you like a clean slate? 
Uh, would you like a second chance, a third chance, a millionth chance where you get full, free forgiveness forever, effective immediately? I want to give you news of a rescue, a perfect rescue that will liberate you and free you from your own self-entrapment. I will look at that topic uh, through a parable of three men who grew up together. They went through early years, childhood when they were more hoods than children, went into high school and college and then they went their own ways. One became married, did not have children and turned into a child psychologist. Another did not uh, become married, he stayed single and turned into a priest in his religion. And a third one followed Socrates' advice that when he became married and had a bad wife, turned into a philosopher. These three men, after 30 years of being with each other, got together in order to reminisce. They walked down the favorite childhood road. They came upon a sign which says, do not cross, danger ahead, abandoned coal mine. Somewhat taken aback that this was their familiar territory and things could not change in 30 years, just 30 years, <laughs> they decided to probe that hole which uh, was very familiar to them. They crossed the boundary and immediately fell deep into the hole, stuck and caught. So they looked into the vertical shaft. They knew there was no way out. Nostalgia and curiosity had gotten them down there. And what would get them out? They slept through the night, the next morning, they began to discuss and plot and scheme a way out. The psychologist said, uh, let me help you. And the priest said, I think I have a way. And the philosopher said, uh, maybe I could guide us out as well. The psychologist said, I can help us feel better inside our self entrapment After all, cognitive psychology has been dealing with forgiveness and guilt for many, many years. Uh, guilt is our interest. Uh, guilt has about 175 symptoms and shows up in, in physical dysfunctions like sleep and sexual and food disorders, in emotional dysfunctions of uh, self-hatred and loathing, of relational dysfunctions like conflict and uh, attempting to control others. And so psychologists can help us in self-entrapment to feel better. For example, they distinguish between false guilt and true guilt. False guilt is when somebody else lays a guilt trip on you. The psychologist says, don't take a trip where the guilt is when it's false. You can take shopping trips and business trips and vacation trips, but don't take a trip where the guilt is. Psychology can also help with what may be called horizontal forgiveness to provide tactics and hopes by which uh, conflict and relationships can be healed. Psychology can help you feel better inside your self-entrapment, but what it cannot do is give you a way out. Do you want to simply feel better in your entrapment? Or would you like a way out? If you'd like a way out, come back right after the set of messages. I'll be right back with you. Do you feel as if you're caught in the web of self-entrapment? There is a way out. Professor and Dr. Ramesh Richard will be right back with some helpful advice. But right now, go to RameshRichard.com and register to win the grand prize, a Samsung Q1 Ultra computer. We're also giving away one iPod Nano a day for the next 10 days and one of 100 complimentary copies of Musings and Moorings, a personal diary to help you record your own spiritual journey, will be sent to 100 randomly selected registrants. But you have to log on to RameshRichard.com to qualify. Again, that's RameshRichard.com. Right now, it's time to get back to Professor and Dr. Ramesh Richard with more on self-entrapment.